big, big button, download now. Now the Ubuntu tweak does work on 10.10. .10. It was actually written for 10.4. But instead of opening it with the software center right away, we're going to save the file and keep that for later. There you go. It's not that big. So we're going to go back to our updates and wait until they have finished, because that is going to take a little bit of time. So once again, time for a big coffee as the updates from the Updates Manager download and install. After your updates complete, it's time to restart. But before we're going to do that, we are going to install the um, Ubuntu Tweak application that we downloaded a minute ago. So just double click on the .deb file that you have downloaded and Ubuntu will start the installer application right away. In that effect, Linux has come a long way to install applications. So just double click and here we go. Here's the installer. So it will just give us the option to um, install. It will actually open up Ubuntu Software Center and give us the option to install Ubuntu Tweak. So just click on install, enter your root password. Once again, that's the password we entered on setup. And the application will be installed. You'll see the progress bar right up here. See the orange bar fill up. And that's as easy as it is to install an application. So very, very easy using the Ubuntu Software Center. Now you can also launch that manually and uh, do it in a more complicated way. But why should you just download the dev file, double click on it and install it right away? And once the installation is finished, the only thing that you need to do is reboot the system. Okay, application's been installed. Close the Ubuntu Software Center. Close Firefox. And restart the system. Once we've rebooted the system, we are going to launch Ubuntu Tweak and we are going to install some applications. Uh, it will give you a warning that you need to enable the Re Ubuntu Tweak repository. This is the big box of software on the internet where uh, Ubuntu Tweaks gets its gear. So we're going to click on yes and then we're going to choose the applications. There is an entire list of applications you can choose from. And of course, we are going to update to the latest version first. And then you can just point and click whatever app you want to install. So we're going to start with Flash, which of course you need. Amule, peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, Audacity, great for audio recording. You can choose whichever you want. Advanced uh, Window Navigator is kind of a OS X toolbar. Banshee. Cheese for the webcam. Chromium Browser. Uh, let's see, community themes for the look and feel. Dia, which is kind of like Visio for Linux. Some have already been selected, of course. Filezilla, great SSH or F SFTP client. Flickr uploader is really good. Frozen Bubble, of course. Everybody needs Frozen Bubble. Uh, let me see here. Gnome Colors, icon theme. Gnome Do, which is nice. It's a launcher. Gnome M Player, media player. Google Gadgets, so you have those two. Uh, Minitube, which is a YouTube client, and Miro, which is also a great, great uh, video player and uh, video podcast player. You can watch this episode on Miro as well, by the way. We are on Miro too. Uh, Shiki Colors, Shiki Girls, Terminator, great, great terminal app, multi windows. Of course, transmission for BitTorrent, the restricted extras. They already are installed, actually, but I'm just going to double click them anyway. VLC, because we love VLC. And if we need any Windows apps, we are going to choose uh, Wine as well. Click Apply, enter your root password, and have patience as Ubuntu Tweak pulls down all of the application and it, uh, all of the applications and installs them right away. So perhaps once again. Time for coffee?
OK, all of the applications have been installed. So just click on OK, and we're going to go to the next uh, item in the menu, which is going to give you a package cleaner option. Once you've got your Ubuntu full of stuff and crap, you can actually clean packages that you don't use anymore and kind of uh, be the janitor of your system. Then there's the source center. If you ever need to add third-party sources to uh, your Ubuntu, instead of mucking around in the source file, you can just unlock uh, this item. Click yes on the bar. And you can actually choose extra sources uh, to add to your sources list. And this is interesting if you want to install, for example, stuff like Opera and things that are not in the standard repositories. Once again, standard repositories are the big um, containers of software online where Ubuntu gets its uh, software. All of these sources are stored in your sources list. So instead of mucking around in the command line, you can actually uh, edit it here. And there is also the Update Manager. Now, we've done our updates a few minutes ago, but you can do your updates here as well. Then we're going to take a look at the Auto Start. And this is the uh, amount of, application that's, uh, of applications that Ubuntu starts up when booting up. So I'm going to deselect some because you know there's some that I don't need and that I don't want to launch right on startup. And if you don't have a lot of system resources, this kind of makes your system faster and makes your boot up um, scheme, uh, your boot up time a little better. Now you can always reselect them if you want to. The next item is the login settings. I really like this one. Once again, you need to unlock it first. And then you can change the login screen background. So before you log in, you get your login window, and you can actually change either the logo uh, or the background or even both. So I'm just going to choose a different one, Feather. There you go, nice Feather logo. You can really customize it, so that's nice. And you can also disable the user list, which we're going to do here. So Ubuntu doesn't display your username at logon, and people have to guess which is more secure. Session control gives you some options about your session. So, uh, for example, automatically save open applications when logging off, which is nice. So they open up when you start again. And you can even uh, disable the dialog box uh, when you log out or restart. Then there's the Compass settings, which is for the funky effects. So we're going to install the Compass settings manager. Um, and we're going to get back to that a little bit later on. Compass will actually help you. Uh, the the uh, Compass Effects Manager will actually manage your eye candy in a simple way. We're going to get back to that in a little bit. Just install it for the time being. Click OK. And then you can actually set how you want your desktop to react. Now, if you know Expose on the Mac, you can see that you can do the same thing. So we're going to mark the top left button to show us our desktop, top right to show us our windows, and bottom right to show us our workspace. workspace. We're going to go for wobbly windows, because we like those. Enable some transparent menus. Enable some wobbly windows, so all of the nice effects, and install the simple desktop effects manager. Now, this will help you to uh, make your eye candy easy to manage, and with uh, the uh, effects that we just clicked on, you can actually uh, manage your windows uh, on your desktop very simply by just going to one of the hot corners that we defined. Now, this is a VM, it won't be uh, able to give us all of these funky effects, but I'm going to show you a live version where it actually does that a little bit later on. So that's installed. Then we can tweak our desktop. Just like in Windows, we can choose the computer icon and even rename it. So you can give it a nice name. Show the home folder where all of your files are. I'm going to give that a nice name as well. If you're installing Linux for somebody who's really used to Windows, this is a nice tweak to use 
So you can just rename the icons into something that they know. And if you change the wallpaper and you change the color theme, they won't hardly know. There you go. This is also a very nice uh, tool. If you ever uh, completely mess up your desktop by actually removing a toolbar or something like that, you can go back to the original settings here. So what I've done now is I've backed up the original desktop settings with the toolbars in uh, the right places and all of the icons and everything by just uh, doing that. And you can just reset to the original setting. So you can always muck around on your desktop with your toolbars and use that to go back. These are some GNOME settings that you can change. Nothing really major here. You can actually uh, change icons for some settings. So you can change the logo image. That's the little Ubuntu logo in your menu. Also a nice option is the window manager settings. You can choose where you want the buttons to go. The buttons to maximize close and uh, minimize have been moved from the right to the left and you can choose to uh, leave them there uh, or you know put them on the other side or even rearrange the icon so instead of going to the forums and uh, complaining that they move the icons from the right to the left you can just use this app to put them exactly where you want to have them again some options here for uh, the desktop. Let's set the uh, inactive window shade transparency level. This means that windows that aren't active will become kind of transparent. Also very cool. Default folder locations. If you are using an external drive and you want to move some of those folders to the external drive, by default you can do it by here, uh, right here. Nautilus scripts. Special script for Nautilus. Nothing to worry about. Templates. If you ever want to add some templates and you can even uh, choose to make your own hotkeys. No, we're not going to go for these options just yet. In the advanced uh, system button, you can choose uh, when the screen has to be locked, either on hibernate or on suspend. And the lock screen when blank screen activates is actually a nice security feature. This is your computer information. File type manager, you, so you can change which application opens which type of file, for example, text files. Most of the text files are, for example, opened by gedit, but you can change that into whatever you want. Images, for example, if you don't like shot well, you can actually choose a different one. There are some Nautilus settings here. We'll just put some, uh, put some clicks here, let me see. This is a good one. Open folder with root privileges, which means that you uh, have more rights in a folder. And you can choose uh, also to use a wallpaper inside Nautilus, which is the file manager of Ubuntu. OK, needs to update a little bit of here again, which are some extra options for Nautilus. Update successful. And then there's the security tab which lets you disable several settings if you have users that don't uh, that you don't want to give uh, all of those rights you can actually disable some of these things once you're done just click OK and we'll reboot the system you see our icons are here let's just reboot the system and see how a live Ubuntu uh, kinda looks like The uh, installation I showed you was done in a virtual machine, which means that I can't show you all of the fancy uh, Compiz effects. So what I've done is I've set up a remote session to my Linux machine, which you recognize by the fact that I've altered some toolbars and I've got a wicked Star Trek wallpaper, and uh, kind of try to show you some of the effects there and also show you what, uh, how to set up the Compiz effects manager. Now you see my icons are nicely here at the bottom at the top so i've opened up some